All right, guys, welcome back. Tesla has finally done it. They've provided a path to upgrade your MCU, MCU one to MCU two. Finally, let's break it down. All right, guys, we're talking about the MCU, the media control unit, the brains behind your center touchscreen and your infotainment. Uh, Tesla has now provided the long awaited and much debated uh, path to be able to upgrade this particular infotainment unit, uh, this MCU unit, this media control unit for you to be able to have upgraded infotainment experiences. Uh, we've made a video before talking about whether or not you can upgrade to hardware three and whether you can upgrade your car's other hardware components contingent upon the performance of the MCU. And for those who are new, the MCU currently comes in two forms, MCU one and MCU two. MCU one being the older legacy MCU, uh, pretty much maxed out in terms of capacity. There's even owners who've had it over 50,000 miles where the MCU starts to fall apart and starts to crash a lot and things of that nature. And then MCU, which is a newer one seen in the, the, the newer 2018 plus uh, Model S's and X's and 3's. Okay, so that's what we're talking about right now. But now Tesla, for the longest time, hasn't been able to provide us with um, an option to upgrade the MCU. So if you wanted to upgrade the MCU to get all the new features, the video games, the Tesla theater, you had to effectively buy a new car to be able to get that. So now they've finally provided a path, a somewhat debatable cost-effective path to be able to upgrade your MCU. So now you could take advantage of all the features and functionality that Tesla has to offer. So here it is right here on the Tesla website, infotainment upgrade. Let's break it down. It says upgrade your infotainment system to access new features as well as a more advanced and smoother user experience. Owners of the Model S and X built after March, 2018 or earlier uh, will be eligible to purchase an infotainment upgrade, enabling access to some of the favorite features like video streaming and expanded Tesla Arcade in addition to more responsive and a faster touchscreen experience. So this is another aspect where the older uh, touchscreens were pretty laggy in comparison to some of the newer ones, especially com in comparison to the Model 3 where the touchscreen wasn't very responsive um, as you drag items up and down or when you move. Uh, this is MCU2 here so you can see how smooth it is. As I drag up and down the screen, it's very responsive, very smooth. This is the level of functionality that they were looking for for older cars and they weren't able to get. So now Tesla's providing this for $2,500. Pretty pricey depending on how long you've had your car. Obviously, if you just bought your car, maybe it's not that big of a deal. But obviously, if you've had your car for a while, $2,500 um, could be a pretty significant investment, especially if you plan to upgrade uh, shortly. So this is really debatable. Use your own discretion as to whether you feel it's worth it or not. Um, I feel that if I was probably still in my 2014 Model S, I probably would spend $2,500 uh, to get this feature, these features if I intended to keep it for a few more years. If I was imminent to upgrade, I probably wouldn't get the feature. Uh, but it's great. It's, a, it's an, av an avenue for the older cars to feel like they're newer and get refreshed over time. So those owners who've had their cars over 50,000 miles, over four years, they can start to really feel like um, their car is somewhat new in terms of the infotainment capabilities. So that's awesome. Uh, the downside to this is that one, you need to have the premium connectivity package uh, in order to make this work. But then also you will be losing and sacrificing the FM radio, AM radio, and Sirius satellite radio. So in upgrading this particular feature, you have to basically make sure that you're okay with losing FM radio. Lots of parts in the country, uh, there are areas where there are dead zones to satellite connectivity where they use FM radio to be able to listen to. If that's you, if that's your experience, then maybe FM radio is worth keeping and worth not upgrading. Uh, however, the trade-off is pretty significant in the fact that you're getting all the Spotify, you're getting all of the Slacker and all the other premium uh, satellite-based radio options, as well as all the games, as well as all the Tesla theater, being able to watch YouTube, Netflix, et cetera, while you're parked at a supercharger like I am right now. Okay, so this is, they've gone through a, lo a long detailed list of frequently asked questions of things that you should know. Uh, understanding what the performance upgrade is going to be, more responsive, smoother touchscreen. Uh, you're being able to display Bluetooth album art, as well as it removing your AM, FM, and Sirius satellite radio as well. 
the games that are going to be added, the entertainment that's going to be added, the driver assistance visualization that's going to be added as well, if you were to couple this with full self-driving. Now, the thing that still remains here that is not negated from my previous videos is the fact that there are cars that will not be able to get the full self-driving uh, computer just yet, just based on incompatibility. For sure, for sure and for certain, it's going to be cars with autopilot one. If you have that, you won't be able to upgrade to full self-driving. Beyond that, just like this MCU upgrade pass, it's debatable and Tesla could figure out a way to make it happen. And if they do, let's make it happen. But take heed to the fact that your car may be built and have hardware that may not be compatible with full self-driving. Tesla will alert you and let you know whether you can upgrade or not, okay? So that's driver assistance features. Security, now these older cars are not taking advantage. Again, those cars who have the eight surround cameras, the Tesla vision system, not autopilot one with a single camera, will be able to take advantage of uh, dash cam and sentry mode and being able to have that have your car be surveilling its surroundings and all the things that some of the newer cars are benefiting from. So this is really, really cool for those who have older cars or for those who are in the pre-owned market. Uh, those who are in the pre-owned market were always debating, should I get a pre-owned car or should I get a Model 3 or should I get a new car? And so what are the pros and cons? And this infotainment aspect of it, the surround cams and the features that you get was pretty much a no-brainer to not get a pre-owned car that didn't support this. But now that we're able to now, the Tesla is able to support this, this now makes a more compelling proposition as to whether you should upgrade your car or not. Okay, so this is really great. Uh, in terms of pre-owned, buying a pre-owned vehicle, more cost-effective, and still getting the features and functionality of some of the newer cars, okay? Other than that, it's pretty much straightforward, gives you a rollout date as well, so this is pretty cool for Tesla to be able to put some dates and some times to when they're gonna be doing this and when they're gonna be scheduling these appointments. Uh, and this talks about when, when will the infotainment upgrade be available for me? Model S and X owners will be invited to groups based on their autopilot computer and feature configuration, and it breaks it down. Again, autopilot 2.5 with full self-driving hardware capabilities, they're scheduling that right now to do that. If you have autopilot computer two with full self-driving capabilities, meaning you purchased it, or even if you have the hardware installed, late March is when you can expect to get the upgrade, the, the call to upgrade your MCU or upgrade your infotainment, if you will. Okay, all remaining Model S's and X's, anything beyond that, are gonna have to wait till early April in order to start getting called in to get this infotainment upgrade. Again, this is gonna be for the entire fleet, so that's great, all Model S's and X's. And again, the sort of uh, surround dash cam component of it is also limited to, to the newer cars beyond Autopilot 1. So if you have Autopilot 1, you probably will get all the main uh, features here in terms of entertainment, but you probably won't get the surround cameras because obviously your car does not have the surround cameras. So this is awesome. This is a really, really good thing that Tesla has done, provided this path. The cost is subjective as to whether it's expensive, whether it's worth it, use your own discretion. But this is really, really great. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think about it, if you are going to get it, if you are currently don't have MCU2, you don't have the latest and greatest features, if you're planning on getting it, let me know what your thought process is. Let me know what you're thinking about in terms of how you value this. $2,500 is not cheap, uh, but is, the, is it actually worth it? Again, each person is gonna be different based on their condition. So let me know in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.